1974, Osaka, Japan. A child named Yuji Naka is enthralled, in fact, obsessed with speed. Meanwhile, a young Naoto Oshima is captivated by every move, every image of the Western superhero. The two will one day join fascinations to change the world of video games, armed only with a blue insectivore in red shoes. This is the story of Sonic the Hedgehog. Nineteen eighty eight. For three years now, the mission of pretty much every game console maker in the world has been the same defeat Nintendo. Nobody can even come close. What will the future bring from Nintendo? The eight bit Nintendo Entertainment System dominates the world market with a ninety percent share. Sega tries to topple the eight hundred pound gorilla by releasing a sixteen bit console called Mega Drive in Japan and Europe and Genesis in the US. Despite a blistering fast microprocessor and some edgy commercials, Sega! there's just no shaking Nintendo's stranglehold. Sega! Sega! In the U.S., one household out of every four buys an NES, falling in love with its chubby little plumber, Mario. 1989, Sega Top Brass wants to boast its console's processing speed by creating a character and game much quicker than Mario. There was a big movement campaign to create Sega's uh, a mascot icon. And it was a company-wide effort that everyone could submit their ideas. And there were about 200 drawings or different characters submitted. A ton of cool pitches come in. There's a rabbit, followed by some other interesting calls, like an armadillo and a bear. Enter an idea from the superhero-inspired mind of illustrator Naoto Oshima. His crafty creature is a hedgehog with Sega blue skin named Mr. Needle Mouse. The spiny mammal could ball up and use his body as a weapon. He's cute but cool, noble and helpful with a little attitude to boot. I actually wrote a proposal and showed it to my boss and told him this is a game I want to make. It was just a character that runs fast and runs in loops. So when I told my boss, he said, the person who can make a game like this is Yuji Naka. Charismatic programmer Yuji Naka has already created a handful of moderately successful Sega games. He kicks off his next project, harnessing his lifelong love for speed to create a game like no other. I liken this to Super Mario Brothers that I had played many, many times. To play Mario from this point to this point took 30 seconds, but if I can go through the same place in 10 seconds, your skill increases. My desire was to play games much faster and have a better sense of accomplishment. Naka's fast-as-heck program lacks one vital element, a character. Oshima shows Naka drawings of Mr. Needle Mouse and explains his unlikely muses. At the time, Michael Jackson released Bad, and his boots had a belt on it, and I thought it was really cool. But color-wise, a black boot is kind of boring, so I thought of the most famous character in the world, Santa Claus, and I took his color to make Michael Jackson's boots for Sonic. Mr. Needle Mouse's get it done now attitude is taken straight from Capitol Hill. If there was a problem, Bill Clinton took action right away. I saw that American attitude on TV. That was the kind of character I wanted to make. After a few character tweaks, the most significant of which is a name change, Sega's hopeful savior is born, Sonic the Hedgehog. That was the most exciting moment for me. It made me think, wow, this is a great game. Everyone's going to be so surprised. Surprised is one way to describe Sega's reaction to Sonic. Many from the anxious stateside management are miffed. Remember, at this time, most Americans have never heard of a hedgehog. People in the U.S. said, what the heck, you know, what is the hedgehog? It was perceived very strangely. That combined with very Japanese style, uh, big cute eyes and that kind of thing, put people off initially. 
The struggling game company's challenge is clear. How do you make an odd blue insectivore defeat the hottest franchise in video game history? It won't be easy, but if they can make it work, video games will certainly never be the same. Nineteen ninety. Sega, with its new 16-bit console, tries to make a Mario killer as Nintendo is about to release its own 16-bitter. Yuji Naka's program and Naoto Oshima's character design yield a speedy blue hedgehog named Sonic, but two essential elements are missing, the world which Sonic will explore and full support from Sega of America. Sega's rookie game designer, Hirokazu Yasuhara, joins Naka and Oshima to form the new division, Sonic Team. Yasuhara designs a prototype featuring the trippy universe Sonic will call home. The challenge? Appease two nations. American audience and Japanese audience is different. American audience feel the challenging. It's the most fun part of the video game. But the uh, Japanese audience want more casual gameplay element. So I want to create a game for the both countries' audiences. Not only the hardcore gamer, but the you know, casual gamers also. While Yasuhara constructs levels featuring loops, pinball-like bumpers, and the soon-to-be-famous gold rings, Oshima builds Sonic's backstory casting him as a rock star in a band full of party animals, complete with groupie girlfriend, a busty damsel named Madonna. Sonic is smaller than a human, but he had a human girlfriend who was very attractive and would chase Sonic, so it's like a male fantasy. The odd nature of the game proves to be a challenge to many, namely Sega of America, led by their new hired gun, Mattel Toys mastermind Tom Kalinske. The new prez brings with him a new outlook. Kalinske's team goes to work repurposing Japan's Sonic in order to make it more sellable in the US. They soften him up, literally and figuratively. Originally, Sonic had fangs, and so we had to remove the fangs. We also had to remove his girlfriend, Madonna, and we also had to remove him out of a rock band. I didn't doubt Sonic. As a matter of fact, I'm known as the mother of Sonic. Mothers love their children. I protected that character. I helped define that character. We had softened him a lot, and um, that was, uh, yeah, there was war. A war starting with a single publicity poster showing Sonic's stateside makeover. I think Oshima's art style was uh, very Japanese. In those days, Sega of America's marketing really wanted to make it a little more American and the very first Sonic the Hedgehog games poster Sega of America marketing created was uh, hated by the Sonic team and uh, became a big issue at that time. I had to go to Japan and negotiate or rationalize why Sonic should look like this going forward and that wasn't a fun meeting. In those days, I hated the American change to the look and feel, and I didn't know how the consumers would perceive it. But looking back now, that was one of the reasons it succeeded. Somewhat content with the character tweaks, the man considered by many as the father of Sonic takes a first whack at the prototype. At the very beginning, honestly, it kind of gave me motion sickness. It was that fast. Sonic Team slows the game down just a bit while finalizing the star's mission. He must stop the sinister Dr. Robotnik from stealing six mystical power-giving gemstones called Chaos Emeralds in an attempt to rule Sonic's homeland of South Island. After months and months of 21-hour workdays, Sonic Team buckles down to finish on time. On the 23rd of June, 1991, Sonic the Hedgehog wags his finger at all of America. This thing has the potential to become one of the most popular characters in game history, thanks in part to risky, aggressive ads and a little guerrilla marketing. We were guerrilla marketers, so we did a mall tour. The purpose of the mall tour was to show Sonic, but we did something very interesting. 
we also introduced the world to 16-bit Super NES Mario. We had a giant 32-inch TV, it was giant at that time, showing Mario and letting kids play it. And right next to it, same type of TV with Sonic. Wow, Sonic's fast. I used to attend the mall tours, put on the Sonic costume. I saw this three-year-old playing Sonic. He didn't even look up at me. I was completely invisible to him, and here I'm wearing this big blue Sonic costume. Right next to him was a teen, right next to him was an adult, and they were all playing Sonic the Hedgehog. I've never seen people gravitate to a video game or to a character as they did with Sonic, because we had nothing else to lose. We had to go up against Nintendo. For every dollar that we had in our marketing budget, Nintendo had $15. Some people may think we were crazy. Some people were thinking that we were risking everything we had by going head to head. Within hours of its release, Sega would find out if their risky game, starring a risky character, would pay off. The fiercest fight in video game history is on. Sega releases Sonic the Hedgehog in June of 1991. Overnight, the tiny blue creature loop-de-loops into the hearts of Americans. He's every bit the instant classic Sega wants and needs. Nintendo's market share starts to budge a little. After other successful premieres in Japan and Europe, Sonic is on its way to break one million sold before the year's end. However, Sega management looks to enter the ever-important holiday season with a very odd strategy. Give their hottest game away. Executive VP Shinobu Toyota and Sega America Press Tom Kalinske pitched the idea of bundling Sonic with the Genesis to Sega Japan Press Hayao Nakayama. He said to us, you crazy? We make money from software. And you give that very best title away? He stood up, he kicked the chair, he started to walk to the conference room door. Then he turned around to Tom Karensky and said to Tom, if you believe this is the way to beat Nintendo, do it. We gave Sonic away eventually to 15 million household with our hardware system. Perhaps the riskiest move of that console's generation pays off. Nintendo, the once untouchable king of console sales, loses the coveted market majority to Sega. It's a dream come true for Sonic's three creators. When Sonic beat Mario, it made me very happy. I went to Universal Studios and everyone asked for my autograph. At that moment, I was like, wow, Sonic is very famous. We did the proof. It's possible to defeat the giant if we had the hardware for the new generation. Sonic to me was like a beloved son. I was very proud of him. I wanted him to continue to grow and continue to make me proud. Sega and Sonic Team immediately go to work on Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Because of the remarkable American launch of Sonic 1, development of the sequel moves from Japan to the newly formed Sega Technical Institute, or STI, in Palo Alto, California. For Sonic 1, speed was at its max. We had to recreate the program on Sonic 2 because we had to move two Sonics at once. So we really needed to focus on speed and the two-player battling games to introduce the character Tails. Tails, a.k.a. Miles Prower, is a fox born with, well, two tails. They allow him to fly for short periods of time in an effort to help Sonic save the world yet again from Dr. Robotnik. Sonic 2 premieres worldwide in November of 1992 among critical and fan-based praise. It sells almost a half million units in the first five days. Very impressive for that era. It goes on to sell six million. Sonic 2 was a huge success, and it was one of those situations where immediately you have to start thinking, if you're in the games business, how do you top that? 
what do you do next? Well, two things. You make more games, and you take your big star for a walk up Madison Avenue. Sega and Sonic pen numerous lucrative promotional deals with everyone from Hojo's to SpaghettiOs. It's as if the entire commerce world wants to slap the hedgehog's mug on their product, including the Mac Daddy of all fast foods. Sonic figurines are sold in more than 50 million McDonald's Happy Meals. In Q-score ratings across the nation, Sonic the Hedgehog is more recognizable to children than Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse has had several generations in the American consciousness going all the way back to 1927 to consider that Sonic has been able to overtake Mickey in Q-score ratings in just a few short years after its introduction is quite amazing. By late 93, he even inks a deal for a comic book series and a couple of animated TV shows. I was built for speed and born for danger. He makes a cameo on The Simpsons and is represented as an enormous balloon in the Macy's annual Thanksgiving Day Parade, the first time a video game character has appeared in the long-running Americana centerpiece. We needed Sonic everywhere. We needed Sonic on TV, in the game, in your bedroom, on your bedroom sheets. We wanted Sonic the Hedgehog all throughout a person's life. We talked about him as though he was alive, as though he was with us. It's kind of strange, perhaps, looking back at it, but um, we were very much wrapped up in his success. And success is precisely what Sega desires with their upcoming release, Sonic 3. With Sonic the Hedgehog currently on top of the video game charts, and pretty much every other chart imaginable, what could possibly go wrong with this future? The answer? A whole lot. Nineteen ninety-three. After two mega hits in a row, Sega's strategy for continued success sounds simple: make a third Sonic. We're making Sonic Three. I wanted to make a big game, and it was scary. We felt that we needed a deeper story to expand the world of Sonic. Adding more of a storyline to this action game made the project huge. A new character is born: an echidna named Knuckles. In true Sonic style, this cousin to the porcupine is given an unusual makeover. Red skin, dreadlocks, and shoes inspired by Jamaica's flag. He alternates roles as Sonic's enemy and partner. Sonic symbolizes speed, but Knuckles symbolizes power. He can break topography or land. He can climb up things and fly. Those were the requirements for the character features. The map for Sonic 3 ends up triple the size of the first two games, with numerous paths for each character. More bosses and environments along with greater speed add to the workload. Has it got huge new zones? Yeah! After delays in production and premieres, Sonic 3 drops in February of 94. It's just as good as everyone hopes, and Sega has a surprise sequel just eight months down the road. Sonic and Knuckles. The game's cartridge actually connects to Sonic 1, 2, and 3, allowing players to explore each as Knuckles. The two games sell 4 million units. Most 2D platform connoisseurs will tell you this is the high point of the franchise. Unfortunately, they are right. It will never get much better than this. After Sonic and Knuckles, Yuji Naka and team return to Japan to make a new Sega game, Knights, as a foe surfaces that not even Sonic can outrun. The constant change of technology. Sony is about to release their first console, called the PlayStation, with its sleek new optical disc format, changing the way games are made and sold. Trying to compete, Sega launches the Saturn, a 32-bitter hitting Japan in November of 94 and the US six months later. Sales suffer as the console is unable to overcome its high price of $399 and competition from the super hot PlayStation at 100 bucks less. The coveted market majority no longer belongs to Sega. Trying to keep their heads above water, a new UK-based Sega group produces Sonic titles for the Saturn. 
With Sega Saturn, we delivered a game such as Sonic Blast, Sonic R, the Sonic Racing game. They did uh, uh, reasonably well, but it was a struggle for us to fight against Sony, and uh, this was the very first uh, roadblock Sonic had faced. Add an old rival to the new one, and things get worse. The Nintendo 64 arrives summer of 96 and steals Sonic's already fading thunder. Super Mario 64 sells 11 million, while Sega halts production on Sonic Extreme after multiple engine problems and missed deadlines. Sonic the Hedgehog's once bright star fades into a crowded sky. The father of Sonic returns to the franchise as Sega makes one last go at a console. The Dreamcast is developed, along with a new look Sonic. We can't transport Sonic's 2D features to a 3D game, so we had to come up with a unique new 3D Sonic. Speed is what everyone talks about with Sonic, but what you will physically feel, like the wind blowing your face and all this scenery coming at you, that kind of speed was enhanced in the 3D game. Sonic Adventure would be the Hedgehog's biggest challenge ever, featuring a whopping six characters, each with their own storyline and abilities. Our mission was to renew the character, so we had to ask ourselves, to what extent do we change Sonic? What are the reasons for changing the way it looks? That's what I paid close attention to. The move from 2D to 3D is where Sonic changed the most. At that stage, I talked with Naka, Oshima, and the whole original Genesis team. We talked about the characteristics of Sonic and how Sonic should be in the future. We talked about it a lot. And we took a long time to make decisions. Fortunately, not too long. The game is finished in time to join Sega's much-hyped Dreamcast launch on 9999. Both console and game sell out within hours. After five years adrift, Sonic is back and looking better than ever. Fans love the mind-bending collection of loop-de-loops and vertigo-inducing jumps. Overall, Sonic Adventure is a triumphant relaunch of the franchise, but the run doesn't last long at all. Sega is still in trouble. The company is drowning in debt thanks to the Saturn roadblock and their pricey ad campaigns. They also spend millions on new hardware that just doesn't sell. In early 2001, Sega announces that they will discontinue their hardware initiatives and focus strictly on game development. In the coming years, Sonic and his friends appear in a staggering number of games for pretty much every platform available. Sony, Microsoft, mobile phones, and yes, even Nintendo. Today, as Sonic Team gets a handle on next-gen systems, the world is sure to see even bigger games and adventures. It's hard to believe that an odd little creature from a couple of young minds forever changed the way we look at video games and characters. When I get a compliment, I take it as a compliment to the team. I did program the game, but just because the programming is good, that doesn't make it a good game. You need a good illustrator for the characters and a good map, and I couldn't have done that by myself. So it was Sonic Team that was great. It was really a good experience. I want Sonic to continue running for another 50 or 100 years. Sonic has appeared in more than 100 games and racked up billions in sales. He will surely be remembered for generations to come. <laughs>